60 minutes overtime. If this is what we've seen with the hundreds of cases of anomalous health incidents, I can assure you that this has become probably Putin's biggest victory. This week on 60 Minutes is the next installment of our five-year investigation into what is known as the Havana Syndrome. I'm Michael Ray. I'm a producer at 60 Minutes. I'm Oriana Zil de Granados. I'm a producer at 60 Minutes. I had no symptoms prior to my attack. Havana Syndrome, which is known by the government term anomalous health incidents. It's incidents that have occurred to government employees all around the world. And the medical professionals who've looked at these people usually describe it as a traumatic brain injury without any hit to the head. Our sources had been telling us since the beginning, really, that they suspected Russia as one of the lead perpetrators. So we decided to collaborate with Christo Grozev, one of the most renowned Russia experts, investigative journalists, data scientists, and open source researchers. He was able to dive into information uh, in Russia data sources that we had no access to. Thanks to the transparency of Russian corruption, we are able to get a lot of data from the gray market, starting always with open source data, trying to find out what has been published voluntarily or involuntarily on the wide internet. It's a global operation. There was some concern today as Vice President Kamala Harris continued her tour of Asia. Her flight from Singapore to Vietnam was delayed for several hours because at least one U.S. diplomat had to be medevaced from Hanoi over the weekend after suffering from a mysterious illness, possibly related to the so-called Havana syndrome, which has sickened hundreds of U.S. diplomats. In August of 2021, in Vietnam, 11 people were reported being struck with Havana syndrome type incident. Nine were DOD, special forces type of people who were an advanced team preparing for a visit by Vice President Kamala Harris. And there were two other embassy officials that were hit around the same period of time. So one of the theories a source of ours developed was that the Vietnamese themselves had been given some kind of technology and told, use this technology to see what you can learn about the Americans before the visit of the Vice President. But they didn't know that this same technology might cause harm to the people they were using it on. So Christo was able to find an email that seems to indicate that that theory may be correct. The incidents were in August, and the email was from March of that year. And it was sent to very high levels in the equivalent of the Department of Defense in Russia. The document showed that Russian intelligence lobbied for and received permission from President Putin to provide exclusive technology that only the Russians have developed to their friends in the Vietnamese security services. And part of it related to acoustic and high frequency equipment for detection of movement and changes in the human body. And that's usually double speak for an offensive operation having similar physical components. You believe the Russians are sending this technology to other friendly governments? I believe that Russia is assisting other governments with some operations that those governments may want to do on their own, and in this way establishing loyalty from these governments for future operations that Russia may need on their territory. If I'm wrong about Russia being behind anomalous health incidents, I will come onto your show and I will eat my tie. We spoke with Greg Edgreen, the recently retired head of an investigation the DOD conducted into anomalous health incidents. They saw us getting closer and closer to Cuba, and they wanted to stop it. This is the perfect tool to use, and they used it well. Then they tried to follow up and do the same thing with Vietnam by disrupting Vice President Harris's trip to Vietnam. Why? Because she was there to lay the foundation for the recent comprehensive strategic partnership that was announced between Hanoi and the United States. A long-term Russian ally, and here comes the U.S. once again, and it's the same story. They attacked our people. And the scale on which they attacked us was quite impressive. Since our last report in 2022, we've been contacted by and sought out a large number of additional victims or survivors, people working sometimes in the shadows for the U.S. government. We built our own database based on our reporting, based on open source records, and we have about 144 cases 
that we feel have enough evidence, indications that they involve an actual attack from an adversary. So at this point, we're looking at countries on every continent except Antarctica. The U.S. government has said very publicly that it's unlikely that there has been a sustained worldwide campaign by Russia or any other foreign actor. And when you hear that, what do you think? Is it happening in South America? Is it happening in Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia? To me, that sounds like a global problem. And I believe that the Russians were behind this. Once you admit that this happened, it is a Pandora box. It requires you to confront the fact that you have your arch enemy acting against your own people, your own intelligence workers, on your territory. And this is nothing other than a declaration of war. The US government requires a very, very high threshold of certainty before they can admit this, because the reaction that is required after admitting is second to none.